big in. Mm -hmm. So we are starting up, but immediately there we've got CDG going after Doorstop. I can't actually see anything from Drillium. They look to be stuck a little bit. Yeah, I mean, Doorstop can see where the... Oh, well, we've already lost a wheel on CDG. That's going to be a big problem for them. And Drillium didn't actually make it into the arena. And, well, we see Doorstop there doing a bit of showboating, celebrating already. Is that the end of the fight? Uh, not necessarily. Um, CDG needs to prove it can get out of its uh, uh, turning circle if it can go a bit further. Possibly, but every time Doorstop touches Enable. CDG, the countdown will be restarted. What a referee is, uh, and that's a nod from the Roboteer. CDG tapping out, and we have our winner, Doorstop. I did not see the breaker in the pit button, and on the red zone, that must be Jeremy. Yes, indeed. Very fun robot. Um, already we can see the drisk of Groundbreaker coming in. Oh! So Reptile Dysfunction there working on the circuitry there of Groundbreaker. That is absolutely the dangerous part because that is all completely exposed. There is no protection there. Yeah, I mean, it's still moving, but one more shot will do a lot of damage there. Reptile Dysfunction with a very interesting drive system. Um, not always most mobile, but it's a fantastic weapon. And you say not most mobile, they look to be just watching at the moment. They're just staying there, listen. And in the Uta zone goes Jeremy. Very skilled job there. Very, very nice. And now we just have the two spinners remaining. Um, both seem to have some issues uh, with spin up and drive. And Reptile Dysfunction there looking a little bit stuck. Of course, they got a big tail that they're trying to maneuver, but now the pit is becoming oh, yeah. gay. Yeah, they have gone to the pit, which will be very interesting yeah. seeing Reptile go uh, for the, the driving match here. And Groundbreaker, I think, trying to get them in the Uta zone, but their spinner, I think, is disengaged. I don't think that's working anymore. Yeah, I think it'll be a pushing match for the rest of this fight, unless... And look at this, the yet. pirouetting that's going on. This is very much a standoff, but we've only got... Yeah. I say only, we've got a good number of seconds left, 45 seconds left of the match, but the countdown has begun. Yeah. Has to be said, uh, Reptile is a very elegant driving robot, if nothing else. Oh, we can see this. This is going to be a continuous navigation now. I think Groundbreaker has the advantage because look at the positioning that they can do. Reptile Dysfunction just cannot find a way to make a pushing match. But as I say that, now they're going head to head. Yeah, I mean, they're both very mobile, very clearly. It's a tough fight to rank because you would say Reptile has done the more visible damage, but uh, Groundbreaker is winning this Nine, control battle. Eight, well, 10 seconds left of the seven, fight, but you have to remember six, Groundbreaker knocked five, out Jeremy, and that's four, gonna go heavily in their three, favor, as this two, is gonna go to the judges' one. decision. Yeah. Fun fight, good to see a fight. First fight to go to the judges. Big game. All right, fight starting up. We're seeing the And look at that already. Well, Bill getting absolutely yeah. fired up. Oh, so totally making their way over. Stop spinning, this is gonna be a concern. And they're really struggling to get any traction and slowly moving yeah. up to Guinness, but Whirlpool Spinner looks to be too tall. Yeah, well, it's, it's gotten a hit there. John Fear is not moving. Oh. And the count referee is counting down, so it is between Guinness and Whirlpool now. Oh, that is a shame for John Deere. So John is officially John out. They will be back in the redemption, but Whirlpool really struggling. That spinner is way too tall. Yeah, I mean, it, it's struggling, but Guinness is not really able to get out of that corner. Um, Boat. Oh, I believe it just hit the link. It just sniped the link. There we go. Very efficient job from Whirlpool there. Strong win. And get ready. And I always find that interesting. The spinners always powering up yeah. before they start charging in and attacking. Very interesting mech on Briere. The vertical spinner can rotate to a horizontal. Goodness. So that's Jack Hammer being flipped over, but they're able to self right, so they're still in the fight. Yeah. And in the Uta zone! Fantastic hit from this combobulator. Landing another one there on Jackhammer. So that is Guru out of the fight. And look at that maneuverability there by this combobulator. Running around Jackhammer. Yeah. Jackhammer turned over once again. Yeah, Jackhammer is still riding, but you would have to say uh, this combobulator has the control fight at this. Although it does seem no, the spinner is still working. Jackhammer going for the hit. Going down. See, control might be the only way to win. Down. So there was a moment of silence there, and look at this combobulator go for a suplex style hit, and then get it very close to the pit. Yeah, that was a very close one. I think that was Jack Hammer's chance. I think he might have missed it there. Another nasty hit from this combobulator. So the maneuverability of Jack Hammer really not there, and this combobulator running circles trying to get the damage in. They're looking for the pit. There's a minute left in the fight, so a lot can happen. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's such a huge amount of weight on this combobulator. It's not a normal. Hammer saws you usually see verts. This is more like a hammer drum. Which, I know. Yeah. 
Sorry to interrupt, but it looks like they are entangled right now. They look stuck, and there we go. They've been able to disentangle each other. Yeah. Oh, no! Oh, 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 what a shame. It was in the fight. Thank you. Getting up again, the big grabby. Instantly getting the approval of the audience. Meanie Mouse and Ava wrangling with each other. Getting a nasty hit. So that's Ava up into the air by Meanie Mouse. And Grabby staying a little bit out of it, just waiting to attack from the back. And in they go onto Ava. Yeah, going in, staying aggressive, which is what you want to do as a control box. Very scary time for Ava, whether to actually bring down the weapon into that drum. And I think, I'm not sure if Meanie and uh, Eva purposely fighting each other, but they're definitely targeting each other. And Krabby is actually being able to get a bit aggressive because of that. But in, in any three-way, the two, the two most down. dangerous robots are going to keep pointing each other. You don't want to get hit nastily. And we have to say, fantastic maneuverability and control by Krabby to avoid the pit. They were very precarious. Yeah, doing well. Eva might have a pin now. No, just about missed a chance there. Really even between these two so far. So the pit has now been engaged, which is really good for Krabby because Krabby can start to get yeah. their claws around Ava's and push the other robots in. Eva yeah, desperately Ava. getting yeah. Meanie into the pit. Not the point. Yeah, can the Oh! And Krabby got it! Oh! Never before have I heard an audience swing so quickly. I have the one name to say over and over. We can see their electromechanical combat device and panda already going on against each other. Oh, two wheels! Already gone for fishing. So no wheels on that wagon. They are immobilized. Yeah. And Panda is only able to pirouette. They haven't yeah. really moved out of that red yeah. zone. And meanwhile, the electromechanical combat device has lost its spinning weapon. This could be... It still has drive. I... Oh, this is a very unfortunate fight in some situations. So this is down to a control. The pit is now enabled. And we see their electromechanical is actually able to hit it. I mean, it's going down. If Electromechanical has the pushing power, it can win this one. Um, I would say normally Panda would be better suited for this, but it is currently not driving too well. Well, they're both rumbling around that arena floor, and Panda doing their damnedest to get into the right position, but really, this is difficult. Would the judges look favorably on whoever activates the uh, pit button, or is that I mean, really not important? I would say going for the pit shows aggression and control. Um, going head on against another spinning weapon will show aggressiveness. Um, driving in something outside of a circle is also generally a point for control. Which is something that both of these robots are now struggling to do. They're not moving out of that red zone. I would say that Electromechanical, I think, has been better at maneuvering themselves to try and push Panda. I would say so. I mean, Panda is... So for mobility, you need to escape out of your circumference when turning. And Panda is just barely circumferencing at the moment. So potentially one wheel taller than the other or another wheel grounding out. Just not getting the purchase they need for that forward movement. Meanwhile, Electromechanical is actually maneuvering forward and backwards. Yeah, which is aggression uh, by the rules Nine, of the judges. Eight, certainly. Seven, well, this is going to go six, to the judges as we have five, the final five seconds four, of the fight. Three, two, Very dramatic one. vision getting knocked out of the fight in the early stages. Yeah. But now we go to the judges. Indeed, yes. So, begin. So... Um, instantly, now the Hammerbot going for uh, Evil Twin. I will say, Evil Twin is made out of 3mm Hardox. That's strong at featherweight level. At a beetle weight, it's as close to indestructible as you can get. And Schism there has an incredible amount of pushing power. Is that just a heavier robot than the others? No, a very nice flip there from Burnout. I, no, I think Schism is still at the full weight limit. It just has really strong drive and magnets, I believe, as well. Do you have more weight under you? Better pushing power. Okay. So that's making advantage of the steel floor that we have in the arena. And now we've got a free robot pile up. Yeah, we can see their schism stacking there. Uh, burnout getting free from the wall. Um, and getting another flip in on schism. Yeah. And we can see the lifter on Evil Twin as well. Going very down. efficient. And now the pit is being dropped. Getting very close to the Uta zone is schism. But Burnout not being able to get the flip that they need. And now we see an evil twin stuck, yeah. I think, against the arena wall. Yep. Another hit there, and Burnout is potentially struggling to self-ride. Oh. And Burnout is slowly walking themselves over yeah. to the pit. They cannot get enough of the momentum yeah. to flip themselves. Oh, an evil twin is in the pit. pit. Oh, I think we... Oh, and we can see Schism very much putting pressure. Although, 
that has actually allowed Burnout to sell right. I think that might have been a bit of sportsmanship there. Well, oh, no, I don't think so. Skids have definitely gone for the pit. As they get very close, Burnout just has Oh, to nasty hit there. In the pit. Beautiful. So, big hit. So some quite smaller robots here, and because they are a cluster box, just because one robot gets out doesn't yep. mean they're both out. But yeah, Inertia yeah. already struggling to gain control. The yeah. power of their vertical spinner. Yeah, um, Ogre Bake is staying very stable, but they have lost one half of the cluster it seems. That's going to be a big issue. Well, do you think maybe they can use the other robot to bring them back in? Are they actually under power, or are they just stuck on the wall? I think they're stuck, but the countdown has happened, and these robots are counted out separately. A belt has gone there, and then Ogre Bake has lost it. It's weapon belt. So you can hear things powering down now, getting a lot quieter. But Inertia, actually, Wedge is doing a fantastic job to get yeah. under Inertia. It has, so it seems Ogre Bank is gone now, but Inertia seems to be stuck on the Wedge against the machine, which has wedged against the machine. Um, we can see three now. So that was a pit maneuver, I think, there, as they maneuvered themselves fantastically in line with the referee's count out. Can't do more than 10 seconds, but Wedge is now being spun around by that vertical spinner of Inertia. And there was a nasty hit. I think that may have gotten the lifter. I think it's done. And Inertia looking very strong there. Both of the other two robots are very, very competent control bots. Yeah, an upset is very possible here. So Snakebite and Africa Grabby are potentially wanting to work together, but Snakebite trying to get in on this fight. Currently it's Africa Grabby, and now we're seeing Attitude just again flips over. Good maneuverability by Afra. Yeah, I mean, Attitude will have a big weapon, but that will mean it'll be a lot more unstable. And these are the kind of robots to take advantage of that, as we can see with Grabra. Very, very nice pin. That literally looked like they were passing in between the two robots. Snakebite offloading to Africa Grabby. Yeah. They are stopping Attitude from getting into this fight. Yeah. You lot, in, in these fights where there's one control bot and two, or two control bots, one spinner, the control bots will usually team up against the spinner and they're not making it easy for Attitude Adjuster here. So I'm looking like, it looks like Africa Grabby has got a bit of a protection, a bit of that armor coming off the post up there. Yeah, that's just designed to take any hits from the hammer saw, stop anything from getting into to the really vulnerable internals. But something's hanging off there. And again, we're seeing Africa Grabby is doing a lot of the grabbing. They're getting ever closer to the pit. That's yeah. really what the control bots are wanting to utilize. And it does seem like Attitude Adjuster is struggling with drive on one side. This is a very precarious situation for every robot here. Snakebite nearly getting a push and a KO by a pitting. So Snakebite doing a bit of damage, a bit of frustration and anger to the arena floor. But now they're upside down. Can they work together to get Attitude Adjuster out of this fight? I think they might not need to. I don't think Attitude Adjuster is able to self right. I think it's gone. So now it's just Snakebite and Africa Grabio working against each other to get the win. As we go into the final 30 seconds of the fight, yeah. Africa Grabio almost missing Snakebite and putting themselves in the pit. Yeah, anytime. I mean, going for the pit here is a very risky move, but both of these robots are very, very evenly matched in the scorecard. I think it might be what Eight. they need. I don't know if Seven. we're going to get it though. Six. And it's very difficult Five. because you edge Four. your opponent ever closer to the pit, and then you'll have to do is slightly move up to the side, and then you'll see it in yourself. This is going to go to the judges. It is indeed very, very good performance. Be chaotic. Yeah. And Mother Loader there in the red square as well with the hammer robot. Uh, the Mangler with the amazing saw and Digester with a very nasty vertical spinning. Ooh, already landing a hit. So Mother Loader oh. losing some of their signage there. And that's yeah. the amount of damage. Oh. The Mangler, I think, is out. And the Mother Loader going up into the arena yeah. room. Very nasty hits from but Mother, uh, Mother Loader did manage to get it up into the air. And Digestive was beautifully positioned to get Mother Loader into the out zone, but they didn't have the spinner up to speed, they couldn't get enough traction. Mother Loader is basically going to try to destabilize Digestive if it can. That, rope, that weapon is so much impact, it will... You see it lifting up when it turns, it gyroscop the gyroscopic force is lifted up. Mother Loader should be able to take advantage of that. But Mother Loader has now lost one of their tracks, and that is going to seriously hamper wow. their drive. The arena roof again we go. Yeah, Mother Loader is looking a little sad now at this point. I think and I think there's it. a lot of people wanting to pin there. We might even get a pin chan going from the arena. Right. Right. That's a win for Digester. Very, very nice. Against the button and perfect in the blue. Oh, oh, it's a little bit like a jump start to yeah. me, I'm not sure. It's well instantly the two spinners going over and so the referee seems to think everything's fine. Oh, a nasty hit there for a paradigm spin. Ooh. So, oh, a going 
going underneath there as they almost got them into the Hooter yeah, turn. Paradise Spin it. getting up to speed and now getting out of control. Yeah, I mean, these, this is a small arena for beef away. Very hard. That is the link gone out. Paradigm Spin's gone, unfortunately. And I've never seen that amount of destruction done to Paradigm Spin by another robot. Normally it's destroying itself, and now we've got a pushing match between Rope and Tusky Cage. Yeah, now Tsuki Kage has actually been pretty smart. It's keeping its face in Propane's weapon, stopping it from spinning up, which, after what we've seen, is a very good idea. But Propane is winning the pushing match here. They've actually got fantastic traction. Look at that grip as they're pushing Tusky Cage up against the wall. Yeah, it does show that a lot of these spinners now, they used to be just weapons, but you do see a lot of spinners now that have drive power as well, which is a very good fallback to have in these situations. But Tusky Cage positioning themselves well, that if they did manage to find some grip, they would be pushing Propane into the pit. But we're carrying the referee constantly counting down. So these are pins that Propane is yeah. now scoring against Tusky Okay. Yeah, Propane is, I mean, it's never ideal to lose a weapon. I think it's playing the clock, but it might also go for a pitting here as well. Depends. It's a bit of robot chicken here. Well, Propane, I thought, was a little bit stuck there. Okay. Yeah, we just waiting for Tusky Cage, and now we see the spinner come yeah. back up to speed. We're going to get some more damage in this Yeah, spot. I don't think anyone expected that weapon to still be working. Um, this is not good for Tsuki Kage. But it is also, Propane is playing with fire here, I think of it. They are, they are getting ever closer to that pit and they're trying to flip and spin their way over but they keep falling Nine, underneath eight, every time they flip seven, Tusky Cage up into the air. That puts Propane running four, underneath. Three, yeah, I mean it's remained aggressive, it didn't have to remain as aggressive, but it's going to go very well for the judges I think. Thank you. Okay. Spin up, we can see. I, I'm assuming Bad Daddy is gonna go over against Saw Loser, but it does seem to be going over both robots here. And we're getting a lot of self writing action here, so already we got Saw Loser already being yeah. self writing. Yeah. I love that they got a little bit caught and flipped over by their own weapons. Yeah. Uh, wait, really nice overhead exchange there. Oh, and that's a lot of carnage there. I think that's Saw Loser losing a part of their Saw. I'm not quite Actually, sure. Actually, I think that was one of the wedge that's on Bad Daddy. I saw <laughs> Another hit there. They've been telling me that I was actually proper cousin maintenance, so very difficult to see. He's got a much better sight than we have. And what's happening here? They're flipping themselves over. Saw Loser managed to use the vert to hit percussive maintenance and the hammer to hit Bad Daddy. Amazing control there. So a two for one double whammy. That's what happens when you're in the middle and you have a weapon that you can action on either side. But Saw Loser now struggling. Yeah, this is by no means a finished fight. Both pro all three robots are still remaining very, very functional here. Oh, Bad Daddy just getting out of the way of the sword, but now they are in the pit. They are out of this fight. Yeah, excellent control from the two. Sort of got bumped in uh, as sort of an innocent bystander of this fight here. And I don't know what happened by Saw Loser there, but they powered up the saw, and it just seemed to wind down as they then went for the hammer hit. But because of maintenance, it's exactly where they want to be if they're going to push Saw into the pit. I think Saw Loser is at a point where, control-wise, if they bring up the weapon, Every time they bring up the weapon, they risk a bounce that could send them into the pit. Well, here this comes, they're really powering it up, and we're expecting a hit at any moment now, but it just hasn't come. That's really teasing us. I thought they were going to do yeah. a big hit. Yeah, no, the Saw Loser is playing, using, seeing discretion as the better form of valor here. May, going for a pitting, but not going too aggressive yeah. for anything that can backfire. Right. It is only 10 seconds Eight. left of the fight, to be fair. Seven. Because it makes them skipping over Saw Loser, so potentially going Four. to a judge's Three. decision. But because it makes them flipping themselves around. Six. And that's the fight. That was a really, really, really strong. That's a uh, articulate. Really interesting weapon here. So, uh, the home improvement with a very nasty spinner. An AOV with a pneumatic flipper. Very rare at this weight class. Awesome to see. So that's what happens when the spinner starts to hit the arena floor. It makes an awful amount of noise. AOV looking out of action. Maybe that flipper gets it back in. Attention, yeah. but that, that sword blade there of home improvement, it seems a little bit too far away from uh, the Roboteers, the other robots. Yeah, so a uh, slot machine with the, with the, uh, the blue robot is has the saw that can come in and out of the machine. Home improvement there with the vertical spinner. It's a bit with engagement, but while AOB is already out, you can see the damage it can do. So yeah, AOB's controller is on the top there, and now we've just got home improvement and slot machine. It's really a question of who can get the saw blade up against their rival. Yeah, it's um, it's a very unique robot slot machine, it has to be said. A lot of design gambling. 
I believe it also has a lifter on board as well. Getting a nice bit of song action there, though, it has to be said. So we've got some sparkling action there. You'd think it was firework night, but not quite. And I would say that Home Improvement has been struggling to drive into slot machines. Slot machines have been maneuvering uh, whenever, whenever Home Improvement makes a charge. Although, yeah. I say that, they look to be stuck and immobilized. I'm not seeing any movement. Yeah, it, it's twitching just about. It seems to get punched drunk a few times with some of these hits. It'll stop moving for a second and then get right back up. So maybe their folks getting stuck under the floor there. And is that an emergency thing? Yeah, I believe. Yeah, the link went there. I think it. So immediately everyone charging into the blue zone. They don't want Baby Deadbot to get up to speed, but now they are. And look at the bottles flailing away by Carbonated Beverage. I think they, they're stuck on the arena floor, potentially. Yeah, I think Car might be done over. It's still moving a bit, but it doesn't have a huge amount of armor uh, to make space for all the bottles. So they, they are pressurized bottles. If they do get hit by a spinner, they may explode. Yes, indeed. Uh, it is struggling, though. Kairos has to be said. Staying very, very aggressive against Baby Dead Bot. This is a hard thing to do. Enabled. And the pit is now enabled, and Carbonate Beverage just getting themselves off yeah. before the pit was activated. I think it's so just in the and we might have a, a cut coming in here from Kairos against Baby Dead Bot. It's got them pinned. So it might have another pin coming up here. Oh, Baby Dead Bot has lost a wheel. And that's really troublesome for them because they only had two to begin with. And they are tapping out, so they are now done. Carbonated Beverage is still in this fight, but really struggling to maneuver themselves. Kairos getting to use that star, cutting in, trying to see from this angle. Definitely, you can hear the blade being effective. And we just heard the saw there, rubbing against the plastic. Yeah. <laughs> Running into the bed. I can't tell. Was that a, a massive force to get any uh, traction with their spinning? Yes. See the two spinners instantly against each other. A nasty hit to the wheel of Bird the Bird already from Colts. Oh, sorry. Yeah, from Colts. It looks like Bird the Bird is actually out of this fight already. So, two can now lose in one of their forks. That is absolutely dangerous stuff by uh, yeah, if they Col Colts. Yeah, if they lose another, that their ability to suplex will be impacted. Not there, though. That was beautiful. So that is a very well-controlled suplex by Tukun, doing exactly what they need to do, and Colt not getting that spinning disc up to speed, so I'm not sure if there's any difficulties with the drive, or if they're just trying to protect their weapon. Yeah. I think if you if you lose the rhythm as a spinner, it can be very hard to find the spot to actually get back up to the spinning speed, especially with such an aggressive opponent like Tukun. And now we're seeing Tukun controlling the maneuverability there of Colt. They're driving around the arena. Can they get over to the pin button? Not quite touching it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, another beautiful lift. Now, I believe Tukan can hold and carry. So long as the pin is normally 10 seconds, but if you can grab an opponent, it's a 20-second pin. That's a lot of time. And now that's the other form there of Tukan being destroyed. So that's going to really hamper their ability to get under Colt and lift them up. Yeah, you can see once you get the momentum as a spinner back, you can really pull it back. And again, no fear from Tukan. But, but they cannot lift. They cannot lift anymore because they've lost their grappling yeah. forks. They maybe can lift, but their uh, reach is very much impacted. But look at this, Colt has lost drive on one side. No, it might be working now again. And that is Tukum with another pin. Both robots avoiding the pin button. They don't want that to be engaged. 20 seconds left of the fight. Yeah, now this is this one's gonna go to the judges, but it has been a very good performance with Colt. Really back and forth match this one has been. I'm looking there at Colt and it looks like there's something Nine. wedged in the speed of this. It looks like the, 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 that's Six. actually slopped and cannot oh. activate. Yeah, oh. yeah part of two cans weapon has acted as a locking one. bar for Colt. Thank you. Alright, fight for getting EMP immediately going. Happy Kepler and he's already beating it. Oh. And then Killjoy coming in, ruining the joy there for. Oh, EMB himself riding so fast, staying impressive. Killjoy currently upside down, which means he will struggle to engage with the weapon as effectively. So, mind your ears, everyone, because that drum and disc is spinning up high and it's grinding against the arena floor, and we're seeing EMP staying away, but charging right in there with that flipper. Yeah. No, no fear from EMP here. I mean, they they want to continue to score aggression, but they don't want to put Killjoy the right way. Oh! Beautiful control! Have you, have you ever seen a 2P land on its side? We are watching it right now. Killjoy is being counted out. Yeah. Is there enough uh, acceleration on that spinner to get it moved? No, it is no, not. No, no, no. I, th 
this is what is uh, referred to in robot combats as the thing. In the red, John Clear in the blue. Look at this, you've got two weapons spinning up and they're going to make contact here. And that's it. That's not great. Well, you mentioned about CDG is fixed it. I was really worried then that they would be immobilised in the red corner, but they are able to manoeuvre. But John Clear is just having their way with that spinning weapon. Yeah, I'm not seeing any mobility from CDG. Tires spinning. Oh. Up into the air goes CDG. So now we're spinning this on spinning this. The vertical against the horizontal. And CDG now out of the corner. But that spinning disc getting that gyro effect because it is really up to speed. That was a really good evasion maneuver, actually, because now CDG is behind John Fear. And the countdown has begun for John Fear. They look immobilized. CDG seems to have flipped over the top. I don't know if they snagged something from their spinning weapon. But John Fear is out. Here. Right. There we go, we're off. So I think this is going to be a much more of a maneuverability, a control fight. Drillium, although it has a drill in it, it's not really much of a weapon. No drill bit, actually, um, if you'll notice, so it's basically useless. Um... So it's, it's, well, that was quite a bit of honesty there. So Guinness now <laughs> pinning Drillium up against the side, so the countdown has begun by the referee. That's going to be valuable points to the judges if it goes to that decision. Yeah, I think the lack of ground game from Drillium is really going to hurt the control players. Well, there's enabled. four wheels against two as well, which is an interesting dynamic here, because you can see Guinness, I think, just has superior traction. Yeah, it's way more pushing power on, I think, cast wheels at the front. It's looking like a funky rubber set up there with Drillium just on the foamies. And I'm waiting to see if any of the robots do hit the button. I don't think it's been activated just yet, but Drillium kind of hovering in that zone. Or seems like they're trying to use their body as the weapon by rotating on the spot. Yeah, I think they're having some control problems going down. here. Um, looking a bit going drunken. Down. Uh, unable to point it in the right direction here, but it's another good pin. So Rob has been counting the referee, and uh, that's a lot of counting. He's going to get yeah, tired by the end of this. Guinness disengaging no in time for the referee's count. And Drillium getting ever closer to the pit. They're trying to lure Guinness in as they start to head closer and closer to that dangerous zone. And is this now Drillium with a pin? No, Guinness firing right back out of the corner. No, unfortunately not. Not enough maneuverability here from Drillium to get around and really take advantage of the situation. So we can really see what's happening here. Drillium is trying to lure Guinness over to that pit area. I think they've identified that there's been too many pins against them for them to really win on the judges' decision. So a pit is what they need as we enter the final 10, ten seconds of the fight. Five, eight, seven, I think that pit isn't six, gonna come unless there's a last minute upset. Four, so brilliantly three, controlled by Guinness. Two, one, Looks like, well, six, going to the judges, but I think we can make a, a, a potential call on blue corner the and game. Jeremy in the blue. So the vertical spinner of Fission, last time the wheels fell off Fission and we're seeing there Jeremy struggling to get traction, but they are both mobile and in this fight as we're seeing some fantastic shunting action from Fission. Well it's a wheelie wheel out world out there Gav. Oh it's not looking good there, lack of traction and mobility from Jeremy. Well we're seeing the, the spinning wheels spinning in Fusion now, Fission sorry, now getting one of the wheels cut off of the body of Jeremy. Poor Jeremy! Desperately trying to maneuver around this arena. And is that the stuff on the arena floor? I, I'm not sure. But the countdown has begun. Countdown is happening, and I don't think Jeremy's got enough traction to get them itself out of there. So I didn't really realize Vision actually has a little lifting action to their spinning oh, disc wow. as well, which is very cool to that see. Is... Wow. Let's see who comes out victorious. And an immediate miss and a pair of wets by the two, and the long forks of Mini Mouse are really helping to protect. But we're now seeing Discombobulator hit into the back of Mini Mouse. You can really see that mobility of Discombobulator just taking advantage of Mini Mouse anywhere around the arena. But the forks of Mini Mouse, as I said, do a fantastic work to really stop Discombobulator from getting any damage done. But the side of the Robot has now been exposed in a disco spin there from Mini Mouse. More damage being done than Discombobulator as the pit has become enabled. So Mini Mouse desperate to get some damage in this fight. They are looking relatively disabled because of that damage done to their will. And now we're hearing the grinding drum 
And that is a tap out from Needy Mouse. Yeah, I don't think they've had enough. Troyer can Big do. <laughs> and they're a bit cagey at the start here. And the spinning there, the spinning disc is not activating, and that's a brilliant grab by Grabby, putting them right over into the corner. They're trying to get a pin, but I think Greer has a bit too much traction on the arena floor. Well, I think the shape of Greer is really uncomfortable for Grabby to grab hold of. Um, it's a you know, slanted side to round. I think it's raising the wheels off slightly. And that's another good grab that we're seeing there, another great grab. Get it over that spinning disc. I haven't seen that spinning disc engage once this fight. Enable. So potentially we've got some great sportsmanship here where it's just going to be a control fight. Down. Or will we start to see that spinning disc get engaged down. in the latter stage of the battle? But Grabby on the wrong side, with positioning Greer to where they want him, and seesawing their way over to the pit. We're getting closer and closer. And into oh. the this match and immediately yes they do so they were actually going to get a fight this time it's a different configuration from erectile dysfunction here horizontal so we'll see if those googly eyes are able to survive the spinner and reptile dysfunction so far just bouncing off and now we are seeing some actually damage being done oh, this and the losers the eyes gone So that's one eye left on pandas. Both of these robots trying to maneuver themselves. You have to say that the aggression potentially in favor of red dot dysfunction, given they have an active weapon. But let's not count panda out, as some great maneuverability could give them the win. Well, it might be a death by a thousand cuts here from uh, red dot dysfunction. Small weapon, but always aggressive. And let's see if Reptile can blind panda as her one eye is still left. That was me for a moral victory. That's what you're looking to achieve. And we're waiting, they're just trying to line each other up as Panda exposes the rear section of the robot. The pit button is enabled, so we'll see if that does become a factor into this fight. But Reptile pushing Panda away from that button as much as they can. And it is a pirouette between the two. It's very difficult, I always am intrigued by the control of Reptile, as they do have a massive tail that they well, need to manoeuvre. It's a servo at the back and it can, it's like controlling sled dogs, you have to pull on each lead to turn it left and right, and it's remarkably aggressive and well driven, I've got to say. It's a well practiced robot there, as we are getting a couple more hits being done onto Panda, but nothing really taking much much of a bite out of Panda, there seems to be quite thick armour there. Not really, if I was, this is the sad part of stage documentary where the attack of prey, um, and I think we're seeing that in the arena. I was going to say, yeah, so Panda looking Nine, ever more and more, more immobilised, but we're six, into the final 10 five, seconds of the fight. Will Reptile get any three, more damage two, done? So far, one, and I has lost to Panda, six, and that is the end of the fight. Head ball. Big hit. I'm excited for this one. All big hitters, just like that. And straight out of the gate, like you say, massive hit. Baby dead Wow. The boys from Ogavik look upset. Understandably so, that was brutal. Big weapon. The Omni wheels of uh, percussive maintenance could prove to give it a, a, an advantage to get around. But attitude adjuster is just not letting go, and down comes the hammer saw. Yeah, I think Scott's pretty upset with his last loss and really wants to take it out on Thomas. Which is mean because look at because he makes such a beautiful robot. Massive hit there, though. Enable. Because of maintenance swinging away, not quite doing the damage that Thomas probably would have liked to do to the top of it. Precise moves you see in robot combat, the link snipe. Take.
kick. Big game. A good driving match. And here we go. We've got Sukage underneath the loader now, pushing, flipping, lifting. With that axe of the loader. Super aggressive. Pecking away. Love seeing that act. Pecking away. Harry has always bringing the fire. Sukage trying to line up the perfect lift. Pips. 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 available, I reckon that's going to play a part. Pips. Going down. Pips. Going down. Sukage trying to line it up. Letting it happen. Great traction on those tracks, so it's going to be difficult to manoeuvre it into the right place. Oh, oh and yeah, so yeah, close to the pit there for Sukikage. Questionable driving. The axe continues to rain down. Vicious. Of all the weapons here, this is probably the one that is most likely to hurt your toe. <laughs> it's a good piece of driving here. I don't think anyone wants to go for the pit though. Maybe a bit afraid they'll fall in themselves. Everyone's a little bit worried. A good lift yeah, to the car get that. Mother Loader, lifting again. So hard to get Mother Loader yeah. into the right place. Nine. Nine. Oh, Nine. oh, oh Nine. so close. Six. Five. And then Four. the hits continue Three. to rain down. It Two. looks like it's going One. to the judges. Six. What a good driving match that was. Thank you. Thank you. Here we go. It's up to speed. I think uh, a good durability test for Evil Twin here. Big weapon. Killjoy struggling to get that drum where they need it to be. Evil Twin dictating where the match is going. Killjoy really struggling for traction here. Are they stuck? I think they might be stuck. The traction. We're going for a pause. Done. Thank you. The drum spins up, but Evil Twin straight in there to stop it. The action in the corner. Killjoy is again stuck. Freed by the evil twin. Could be more serious than traction. It might be a whole drive gone down. Is it drive? I'm not is too it sure. traction? But Killjoy. Come on. Evil twin still pushing forward. And now everyone is stuck in the corner. Well. Sure, if this is a double count or a single count, we'll have to get the judge or the red. It's a, it's a cross. Rob gave us the cross. <laughs> is it double count out? Yeah. I think that's going to the judges as a double KO. Big in. The burp, the saw blade. Which will make contact first. Ooh. Oh, that saw blade. The sound on that. Rory bringing that saw into the side of Bert the Bert. The sound of slicing plastic. It's probably going to be very good. Full TPU on Bert. It's going to cut real nice. Pip, enable. Pip, going down. Pip, going down. The pit is in action. but that saw blade is not in one piece. Has the tide of the fight changed? Oh, big shot, I think, I think that might be it. Slot machine. Slot machine waffling on its broken saw blade. The third wheel break, the third 
Davis looking in pain at his arena floor. And Bert the Bert now. Wow. It's already dead. The count out happening. It's a win for Bert the Bert. Here. And Ali spins up quickly. But also stop very quickly. Tentative. So I think if you're snake right now, you really want to get that lifting, grabbing jaw inside the weapon and just really stop it because I mean if you've seen it spin up there, it won't really have much draw. Being on the receiving end of the bad daddy beater, the champs. I can tell you that thing is brutal. If they can get it spinning at full speed. Good. Enable. Look at this. Good grab here from Snakebite. Stopping the weapon. Big grab from Snakebite. And the bad daddy weapon is... Trying. Can it get fully going? Good. Going down. Is it going to be Good. a battle for Going him? down. Snake by with the grab. It's a great grab. Can they maneuver them towards the pit? Nine, eight, seven, six, five, 
there's so much rubber on the ground, it's actually hard to push uh, the robot. So, actually... It always wants to move in a circle, even if you get to the side, it'll just drive forward. Yeah, it, it is a very slippery, hard robot to handle. Um, and I have to say, like, that, that part of its design really doesn't seem to be paying off here. It's a stalemate here. does still have a working weapon, but electromechanical combat device can focus pretty much entirely on a... Well, okay. I was going to say uh, focusing on avoiding weaponry, and I believe Reptile Dysfunction has sniped the latency of electromechanical combat device. Wow. Uh, that impressive. Thank you. And so here we are with the horizontal spinner of CDG versus the vertical spinner of Groundbreaker for round 32. Let's see. Round breaker starting to get it doing a bit better from the impacts here. CDG may be struggling with driving one side, but the wheel hasn't fallen off. And we can see here slowly something has fallen off there. One of the forks from ground breaker. Both weapons still tearing chunks out of each other. Really, really impressive. So ground breaker's tap tail. That's it. There we have it. The emergence. Yeah. And we can see Whirlpool Spinner is, I think, a little bit above Guinness. So let's see if Guinness can get underneath. I mean, I think sometimes a high spinner, if it can just clip some bits like the top of wheels, that can do a lot of damage in itself. Uh, but Guinness needs to keep attacking Whirlpool in ways where that spinner is not coming into contact. Yeah, but Guinness has now lost one of the uh, treads on their wheel, so they are now a free wheel wagon. And I think we now have a pin underway in the blue corner. Yeah, one thing I would say an advantage with Guinness is because we're a high weapon. Yeah, Guinness can afford to run forks. A lot of times you can't really run forks in a fight like this. Um, but it has to be said, Whirlpool is looking a bit punch drunk here. It's up to speed again. We see Guinness there is very much deciding to attack from the side because that means they don't get as close to that spinning blade. It's very tactical driving from yeah. Guinness. Oh, their wheel now does fall off. It's gone for going the down. Now Guinness is hoping to sink this one pretty soon. Going down. And of course, if any part of Whirlpool touches the bottom of the pit, they are out. They don't. They with that spinning disc. Sometimes you see these types of robots fall in and then jump back out. But if they jump back out, they're still eliminated. Yeah. So you can see there, Guinness using the pins. Playing the clock, it's giving up a stout defense so far, it has to be said. And they're running the clock down to, the, to a degree. I mean, Guinness is a control bot, that is what it's designed to do. Yeah. Whirlpool just hasn't really got the uh, damage that it relies so heavily on. Yeah, and now they are angling themselves towards Guinness to try and get that weapon into effect. Yeah, these are two robots that I would say neither are operating at 100%, but they are giving it 100%. Um, this is going to be a very tough one for the judges to call. No one, neither of them can really take it easy, so to speak. And we're going into the final 10 Nine. seconds of the fight. Guinness getting ever closer Seven. to the pit. Six. What an amazing comeback there from Guinness. Absolutely slugging it down. In the red. A lot of black and yellow in this fight, it has to be said. But which one of them will end up? Oh, I didn't come up with a good metaphor for that one. I'm sorry. Well, but already first hit for Jack Hammer. Jackhammer coming down in with their weapon. So Grabby surviving through the redemption round. Grail and Jackhammer didn't do the redemption round, so they've had a bit of opportunity to rest and maybe recharge and look at the damage being done to Grabby. Yeah, Jack Jackhammer heard all of that cheering earlier on and it did not care. But what a, an efficient way of dealing with Grabby. Spirited competitor. But I think this is the end for Grabby, I'm afraid, in the main tournament. Well, that is an official knockout fantastic fight. Yeah. Both, and both coming out fast, a little bit of a dodge in a pair of wet, but now discombobulated, getting the better of the exchanges. Even now, back in the control. Let's see if they can make up. Yeah, both of these very, very well um, matched against each other. Have ground scraping forks, have the hammer saw. I'd say Discombobulator probably has a bit more power, but Ava has probably better design for controlling a match. Well, I think we've seen the power so far, but now Ava getting into this fight, they're controlling it a bit better. This is what they need to do. They need to disengage with that weapon of Discombobulator. And look at that now, we've got Will rolling around. I think that's come up with Discombobulator. Yeah, I mean, both of the two machines are definitely injured from all of this. Uh, I mean, you can already see nothing seems to be impacted too much in AIM at the moment. 
but either they're having a pin up against the wall, they're getting those judges points, and again, they've gone back for another point. And Discombobulator, a miss there, but they almost got the hit. But I think something has flown out. I think we might start to have a countdown here. Ava's done it. Ava has actually disabled um, Mother Loader and Propane, round the 32. And straight away, Mother Loader going up into the air from Propane's drum spinner, and this is just becoming a bit clinical for Mother Loader now, disengaging, they're regrouping. Let's see if they can actually get into this fight, but Propane giving them no opportunity. Yeah, Mother Loader has shown itself to be a punching bag and how durable it is, but it will, Mother, uh, Propane is able to be a huge amount of damage. And we can see there the track of Mother Loader is already off, so they are on to one track drive, only the right hand side has any drive. And Propane is going to be taking full advantage of that, but the axe is still in full operation. Yeah, I mean, Propane has no reason to go for the pitch. Uh, it can just take its time with this one, picking apart piece by piece. Uh, pretty, uh, pretty brutal, but that is a tap out, a tap out by Mother Loader. Short work of uh, Mother Loader, but let's Thank see, you. I hope you let's do Another countdown, home improvement, as it comes charging out. Oh, oh my and that's devastation! I think that's it. That was it. Oh, the guts are all out. The red. Big in. So here we can see, um, I mean, both of them very much control box at heart. I was really going to say, two could actually control their acceleration out of the box. And as soon as Snake might got past them, they seem to accelerate out of nowhere. And now we're going in for, I think we might be about to see a grab and a suplex. Yeah, I think a big advantage here is Snakebite is much more of a grabber. Um, but Toucan has the ability to lift an opponent, which in an arena now that you can throw opponents out of. Really big advantage in a control match. Well, that's what I thought we were about to see. I thought we were about to see Toucan get underneath Snakebite, position themselves, and then try and suplex Snakebite into the Uta zone. But that didn't quite happen. Clearly, they might be a game plan, yeah. as we're now oh. seeing the suplex. Beautiful suplex. Now, Snakebite can self right. Um, good points for the judges, but Dukan will need to re engage. They do have them vulnerable. And that was another great suplex. Staying away from the pit area is both of them. The Snakebite, I think, that is what they're relying on because they don't suplex. That's not how they win matches. Yeah, this is a real. I mean, I would say the momentum is with Dukan, but anything can change here. Especially with really fast robots like both of these. I was going to say, yeah, the grip and traction that these robots have is incredible. But Snakebite is trying their best to get into this fight. They need to open their jaws first. And now they're both entangled, yeah. but two can getting the better oh, of it. Beautiful. It's doing great, and oh, goodness me. That weapon is not working on Snakebite anymore. The countdown has begun. Three, two, one. Toucan is the winner. Uh, I mean, what else can you say except that that was a textbook win? Thank you. So we can see here immediately Africa Grab were getting the first win. And Burnout though, we saw Burnout in the last match struggling to self right. There wasn't enough momentum from that weapon, yeah. but there it is time. Right. So I think Jevin may have solved that issue. Maybe he's just moved something around. And the well, might have solved that issue, but they now need to be stuck against the arena wall. But Africa Grab, yeah, great sporting air behavior there, unsticking them against the arena wall. Yeah. There seems to be a bit of a weakness for burnout in the board. They're really good at getting under something. But oftentimes that thing is the arena wall, which is a very big problem. And the pit has been enabled, and now it's coming down. Yeah. Burnout in a very precarious position. Very good teamwork between a mini map there. Um, in the round of 32 knockouts. Yeah. Both very fast, snappy robots. This might be over before we even realize it. And digestive there with a very good shield, which is necessary against Paradigm Spin. The spark spinning already. Paradigm Spin up against the wall. Yeah, digestive will hope to keep pressure on Paradigm, stop getting up to speed. Uh, it has gotten up to speed now, and as soon as it does that, it becomes a lot more of an even fight. And we can see that they are really just navigating. Oh. That's digestive. It's in zone to zone. You can see the delightment in the crowd. Had a great second match. And is take, you can see Schism is taking no chances here. That was such rapid speed out of the blue corner. And they got Bert exactly where they want him. And already coming in with their weapon. Once again, back up against the wall for another pin. Yeah. A very scary time for Schism. It doesn't want to feed a time directly into the spinner of Bert the Bert. But it does need to use it at some point. Now is the time to use it. And that looked to be weapon or weapon damage there. Almost Schism trying to disable Burn the Burst Burst. Yeah. And you can see Schism can pivot from being uh, you know, a spinner to a 
spinner to really a control lot at this time. It's pinning Bert. Um, perhaps a little too well because the fight has been passed for. Thank you. No, they're both alive. They're both very much fully active. And Bert and Bert doing a fantastic job to maneuver themselves and rotate around Schism. The pit button has been enabled and now the floor will fall as Schism is trying to navigate by the bats into the pit. I mean, what else can you say? That was... Thank you. So we have it immediately. Salas are getting on their attitude adjuster. Both and immediately not... taking attitude adjuster to the Uta zone. Yeah, I mean, if, if they can take him, if they can get scoring out of the arena, they'll be very efficient. Oh, my goodness! And that's it. What did we just in the blue? Thank you. And, well, both of them letting their spinners get up to speed. Waiting for some carnage and maybe their bottom immediately yeah. going up into the air. I would be shocked if this fight goes the full three minutes. Already the reach of Baby Deadbot having a larger surface area seems to be affecting inertia a little more here. Well, you can see the side armor there of inertia is completely destroyed, and I think that might be the end. I cannot see any movement, yeah. and the controller is down. That was it. Oh, and you can see there a bit of damage to the wheel of Baby Deadbot. Oh, well, the competition. Battle stations and now Wedge making their way in and under, as you would expect, up against Kairos. Yeah, this seems Wedge against the machine, this seems to have a lot more weight in the front, and this might make it a bit of a challenge for Kairos to actually get underneath. I find it quite impressive from that robot because we see it very often with other robots getting caught on the arena floor. There are lips there that can get caught, but Wedge Against the Machine seems to be perfectly balanced where it just manages to skirt along the floor, get under its competitors without getting caught itself. Yeah, it's a very challenging balance to achieve. Um, I, I know that I've seen several other robots in heavier weight classes with a similar design, but Wedge is very unique amongst the Beetleweight robots. You don't see a lot of these bricks, but this is actually a really good matchup for it here at the moment. And we see Kairos there trying to use their weapon to push off against the wall to get them away from that pin, but I think they didn't quite have the reach to be able to do that. And Wedge Against Machine got another load of time there counted down, which is going to go in their favor. And now we're seeing that armor of Wedge being put to the test against the saw blade of Kairos. Yeah, Kairos, the only real solution is to try to go for a wheel and try to get something, but. You know, Wedge Against the Machine is, first of all, you need to get underneath it for the song to be in any way effective. And Wedge is just not down. giving any openings here for Kairos. And now it's getting a little bit swarmed by the two robots as the saw blade comes down, but Wedge put it the uh, Kairos once again up against the wall. That metallic shield seems to be too impenetrable against the saw blade. Yeah, no, I mean, the saw blade robot, so many robots are plastic or 3D printed in Beaver Weights, which Saws love, but sometimes a metal robot just shows yeah. how hard life can be for a saw Eight. robot. Well, we're into the final 10 seconds, and now we're seeing Kraos finally getting some proper aggression in. Yeah. Look at the amount of damage the sparks flying in the final seconds. Getting some sparks, that's going to be good aggression, but I don't think it pierced through anything. Thank you. So we can see here cagey stuff from the beginning. We have a mini bot in as well on the side of EMP. I was going to say, Evil Twin looked a little bit slow off the start there, but now they're getting into the aggression with a pin. Yeah, so you can see the minibot here, driven by Jack Franklin. Uh, very much an equal in this fight, I would say, to EMP. If not more important, quite frankly. Um, but we can see here uh, EMP going aggressive. Oh, Evil Twin seems to have been distracted a bit by the minibot. But that is uh, a self-stick, really. They are fighting each other. But EMP now coming in with a brilliant flip. That's the yeah. second one of the fight. Yeah, it has to be said, Evil Twin can self-right. And otherwise, you know, if it was upside down, it would be completely disrespectful. But that wedge might be working a bit too well. It's stuck in the pit. Can it? it has gotten away, but it is not in a good point in the position at the moment. In a very precarious position, EMP just by this time. And ever closer to the get. Can we see an Evil Twin into the pit? That was, that was not how I expected the end of the tournament. Thank you. So let's see, Vision is first out of the box, but now Reptile Dysfunction making their way, slivering their way around the arena, trying to position themselves so that they can get some damage on the back of Vision, but Vision definitely the more mobile. I mean, Vision will be aiming for those wires to power the steering system on Reptile Dysfunction, but 
Reptile just needs to get one or two good hits onto that 3D printed body of Vision and hopefully try to split something. We can see there that the, uh, the pit there is going to hit during Vision's hawks will yeah, make it more progress. And I think that was Reptile Dysfunction again, a good little hit, but then a death roll by Reptile Dysfunction yeah. after a hit from Vision. Yeah, knocked over. Invertible in this configuration, it has to be said. The vertical spinner isn't, so a good choice of setup uh, for Reptile Dysfunction here. Yeah. And now the pit has fallen down, so let's see if that comes into play. But Vision there, charging around the arena, getting a lot of momentum. And is that Reptile Dysfunction wiggling the way into the pit? And it's down! There we have it. Thank you. We have a start here. CDG getting up to speed. We can see a different config on Guinness this time round as well. And now CGG working on the back end of Guinness, but Guinness somehow managing to pivot themselves around 180 and getting the folks back into CGG. It's going to be a challenging match for Guinness to keep those wheels in one piece because an undercutter is designed to slowly grind away at wheels and take more and more off them. And I'm quite surprised actually that both of these robots seem to be really equal in terms of a pushing match, but now we're seeing Guinness getting a pin up against, or are they stuck? No, there was a good pin there by Guinness. Now, running down the clock, always a good idea for Guinness. Um, of course, now the pin is available, which is, could potentially be an issue for one of these robots if they struggle with any kind of traction and drive. And I'm trying to look at the front two wheels of Guinness. They really do seem to be shredded. So that spinner there of CDG has done exactly what it needed to. It got underneath Moravia over the top, and it has done a lot of damage to it's, the body of Guinness. It's done the damage to the front wheels. It has enough of the back wheels to keep going. Um, but CDG, despite not driving perfectly, does seem to have a bit of an advantage going forward here. Well, saying no spinning perfectly, we've now they've now 180 themselves, so that that spinner is now on the top. They've got a higher level spinner, and now that's doing more damage to Guinness. Look at that front end of the chassis; it looks to be falling apart. Yeah, I mean it's falling apart. It seems relatively structural, but I think Guinness has lost any real pushing power. It's hoping for some kind of a pitting, but. And we're into the final 15 seconds and we're getting ever closer to the pit, but this is a pure pushing power between Guinness and CGD. Yeah, I mean, neither of these robots want to go in at this late stage. Uh, they're very much playing for... And there's absolutely nothing left on the line here. Nothing to do. we're getting closer! Into the pit goes Guinness! Thank you. A very interesting challenge because... Jackhammer has a damaging weapon, but it's also pretty decent with control as well, it has to be said. And I think that is what they're going to need, but immediately getting in with a flip is EMP. Jackhammer hasn't seemed too aggressive at the start of this fight. No, no, I think it's just trying to make sure it doesn't get outflanked, which is a big problem when dealing with such an aggressive minibot here uh, as being driven uh, for EMP. It's genuinely the star of the show in this fight, absolutely. More than 50% of the work in is truly special. So Jack Hammer there, relying on that hammer saw to get into EMP. But so far, not really making much contact. They're really struggling, I think, to maneuver themselves around. And EMP taking Jack Hammer to a pit and goes to mini bomb. But Jack Hammer is still alive, and they are pushing themselves out now. There's some damage, and Jack Hammer goes in the pit. Yeah, that was very. That could have gone very, very wrong. Big game. So, Wedge Against Machine has uh, survived some damage from a saw up against the, uh, the armor of them doing a fantastic job. There is a lovely shine where it's been polished by a saw blade. And now we're seeing Eva come down with their hammer saw. Maybe this will be more impactful and can make some more dents in that armor. Yeah, it's already landed two hits now. Let's see if the third impact does anything. Really, we might actually have a disablement here. Well, no. I think one of the wheels is stuck, whereas the opposite is still moving. The flipper is still active. The countdown is it's getting going. ever closer. I think that's it. I think Eva has done this incredibly efficiently. Thank you. Propane and Baby Deadbot, two very hard hitting robots. Baby Deadbot does not want this fight to go on any longer than it has to. You can see here. I think but that that looks to be the end of Baby Deadbot. I cannot see any moving. The control is down. That's it. Baby Deadbot is out of the competition. 
goodness me, that was... Oh, they lost their initial round of three uh, against Home Improvement, but now they're engaged and the sparks are flying. Yeah, so we can see here Home Improvement keeping pressure on that wedge at the front. It's not maybe as low down as the fort, but it's such a wide area. So good at feeding robots into that very, very scary weapon. And actually you're just doing their darndest to get the forks underneath Home Improvement as they're doing now. Bashing Home Improvement against the yeah, wall. That is the best way to remove that weapon. That was the hit that Attitude, hope, attitude of Justin was hoping for. Something at the back, but it's vulnerable now. That's you, Justin, actually, they got their forks entangled with their weapon. I had a great view of it there as they went for a hit down on Home Improvement. Yeah. Their forks got in the way. Yeah, they managed to get away from that. That could have been game over. Now, I think they're going to go for the pin here. Using Home Improvement's weapon against it. And look at the damage it is doing. is now being pushed up against the wall again. Yeah. That's you, Justin, though. This time, they're the ones out of control. Yeah, and Home Improvement is sizing up for a hit. Yeah, Home Improvement wasn't able to capitalize there. These are moments, they seem to happen a lot for Attitude Adjuster, but it is remaining aggressive, it's winning control, and something's came out. The link, the link has come out, the link has come out with Home Improvement. Wow. It's going to be their toughest battle yet, potentially, and straight out of the blocks they go, and engaging their forks. Yeah, these are two robots that are very fast, very maneuverable, very hard to hold down, which both of them want to do, to use their weapons to their most effective. And I think Skizzers so far, they're actually having the most difficulty with their forks getting caught on that arena wall. Yeah, so you can see here, holding down, just getting the speed up, trying to land a hit onto the top plate here. But I don't see Skizzers' blade, I don't see that actually spinning, I think they're just using it as a pure hammer. Yeah, possibly, but he looks like he doesn't want... Sweetie does not want to spin up that blade until he can hold, because if you have the spinner active while driving around, it'll make it a lot more squiggly. That was very close. So Tugan there with a very, very close grab and lift, almost to the Uta yeah. zone. And the pin button was hit as a result. Yeah. And that was very close for Tugan, as they were right where they didn't want to be. Yeah. Both of these robots very clearly fishing for that pitting if they can get it, but neither of them wanting to make themselves vulnerable. Well, the audience are getting into this. They're chanting in the pit. We'll see if they make it. One minute left in this match, and Tukan currently being lifted up a little bit. Yeah, anything can change here so fast. We can see another hold of the spinner getting up to speed, going down again. It's been a very cagey match, neither going for their signature attack for fear of missing and being vulnerable. And now neither of them really want to give either way, but Skizzer once again getting the better again underneath Tukan. And Tukan now looks a little bit stuck and into the pit. Yeah, very, very effective fight. I mean, Boba. So Abra can grab your movement straight in, but yeah. it's too late. Yeah, Paradigm Spin is now up to so speed. Abra is leaving the lifter up so that, first of all, the spinner doesn't hit it, but also it can lead with its wedge underneath. And maybe use the spinner as a sort of keep-away stick. Very, very clever design here. Well, there's clearly some good tactics. They're ducking and diving each other in the moment, but Paradigm Spin, I think you're right, that, that shield of uh, Abra can grab you. That's doing a fantastic job to deflect the hits from Paradigm Spin. Yeah, Paradigm hasn't really been able to get up to full spinning speed yet. Um, so, right now I think we're seeing the hand of the Paradigm Spin getting stuck on the grabs of Abrica Grabia. Exactly, yeah, Becca doing a great job here with the control. And, and it just does not seem to be able to spin up to the deadly speeds we saw earlier on Paradigm. It seems a lot more sluggish. And it, yeah, it seems to be almost powering down there, just staying stationary, but we can still see the light is on, yeah. so there is some power to be had. Yeah, this and, is... No, you know, this is, this is a robot not to be underestimated, even at this stage of the fight. Going down. I mean, Africa Grab are trying to position themselves so that they can push Paradigm Spin into the pit. Less than a minute of the fight to go, trying to go for a lift here. And is that Paradigm Spin out of the fight? They're not moving anywhere. They're definitely not moving. Well, no, they are now. It, it seems to have a very stop-start style of move in Paradigm Spin, like a, like, a, like a child that's eaten too many sweets. So the final 30 seconds of the fight, and I have to say, a little bit of an upset so far. Africa Grabia potentially getting the better of it, but can they finish it in the pits? Let's see if Paradigm Spin is over. able to get back. They have the grab now. Pit, 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 there we go. There you go, finish it off. I think they're purely just trying to keep CGG away, but as you just are going straight in as you would expect, stopping CGG from getting up to speed, and down comes the hammer. Yeah, exactly.
exactly the kind of situation attitude adjuster has been using. Hit an opponent, keep him steady, get the weapon up to speed, bring the hammer down. And now it's a positioning battle. Is really all they're trying to do is size up each other and see what is the best way. But CGG, their wheels, they're rumbling across the arena floor, and that was a large impact by Atu Adjustment, but it missed. So CGG getting away from that fight. Yeah, CDG seems to be struggling with its drive somewhat. Another nasty hit from Attitude Adjuster coming down onto the top of the panel. It's definitely... Ah, uh, there we go. That is the link, the emergency link, tactically removed from CDG. The blue. Both are spinning up, waiting to see who lands the first hit. It's going to be propane. Well, now we get to see if that flipper of vision does actually activate and work, but they seem to be able to maneuver, and Propane going back in for another hit. It, I will say that it did seem to stop Vision from doing the thing, but it has seemed it's gotten stuck on a part of itself, I believe. Yeah, Vision is able to spin up the weapon, and the wheel is moving, but they're just not going anywhere. Oh, it got beached. That's all that happens that fight. That has to be... Oh, that is a... Big game. And immediately there, you see EMP and Minibot diverting away from each other, and Schism left going into the middle, and now sandwiched in between the two. EMP can very easily be caught on those forks, but it is not going to make it easy for Schism to get underneath it here. And now we see Schism actually lifting up EMP, and now comes the hammer. They're trying to get that saw up to speed, but as you said, Owen, they wait for the control element, and then they instigate it. It's, uh, and it's a problem against a robot like EMP, whose weapon is instantaneous, like that, as you can see. And this is the first time we've seen Schism knocked over this entire event. So, so EMP getting the better of Schism for that exchange. Yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely given Schism a much larger challenge this time round. Um, really, neither robot really getting a perfect. Oh, this is a good shot for down. Schism. So this is what they've been doing all competition. Get the component up onto the forks and wheel them over to the pit. Oh, they're getting ever closer. EMP. Very efficiently done there. Into the pit. Oh, that is incredible. But let's talk about this fight now. Africa Gravia getting in there, but Eva, I think, getting the better of the exchange. And now underneath Africa Gravia. Certainly the forks uh, seem to be doing better against the wedge of Abra and a head to head. Abra will have to get around Ava to get it. Of control. You can see the mini bot now doing its job. Yep, so that is now lifted up Eva, so Eva can't even disengage if they wanted to, but the hammer saw now coming down in Africa Grabia, getting some grip, getting some purchase, and trying to pin Eva themselves. I mean, it's a challenging fight for Grabra, but again, any kind of grab robot we can see here. But this is a lift. lift. Flipped over. Eva self riding very, very quickly. So Abaka Grabia managed to get one of the forks into uh, Eva and lifting them up. But Eva, very unthankful of that, and now pinning. And that's the saw blade coming off! But this is a shock, so Eva's weapon has disabled itself. So Abaka Grabia now, they are pretty much back into this fight. This is coming down to a pushing match. Who can get onto the pit, onto the forks? One minute left of the fight. Yeah, Eva has 60 seconds remaining to win this fight. And I think they're trying to go for a lift here, but they can't quite do it. Abra is pulling, pulling on the cable of the spinner motor on Ava. And the robot is... What? No, I think they were going to do an unstick. Okay, so, so that was a separation. They got canted down by the referee. Of course, the entanglement there by Abra Grabia on the cable of Eva. Uh, the countdown was started, but we are just going to resume from where they were because they untangled themselves. But only a, a couple of minutes, well, less than a minute of this fight. Let's see what Abra Grabby can do. Back in again, Abra straight after a move, pulling an exposed nerve on a robot. It has been enabled here. But Abra Grabby is the wrong side. We're waiting now, and Eva now getting underneath Africa Grabia once again, yeah. but they're getting ever closer. I think they're trying to shuffle their way to the pit. I think We've lost our timer, so I don't know how long is left. Yeah, it, it's a hard match. Ava, I think, has to go for the pitting here. Otherwise, it's a very close judge's decision. But Eva's doing a fantastic job. Ever closer to the pit we come. And Africa Grabia, you have to say, struggling in this Seven. match. The final Six. countdown has begun. Five seconds Four. left. Three. Very close. Two. One. Africa Grabby again tangled there once again on Eva. And the fight will go to the judges. This year. And immediately now it's gonna
going to be very critical. We can see already, Propane's spinner is not getting under attitude just as much as they would hope. No, but I think the uh, spinner of Propane is actually hitting into the forks of attitude adjustment. So that's going to be doing some damage. And now we're getting a great pin here. Yeah, going to be building up that speed on the hammer. Not spinning up at the moment, but it's fine. It will have other opportunities. Yeah, the hammer not doing too much damage. And now, yeah. as you just been being very careful not to go into the Uta zone, that was a little bit tedious yeah, for them. Again, we can down. see vulnerable for a moment, but right going back down. into this tournament. And now we're seeing once again propane pinned up against the wall. As you just been getting control, getting will we see that speed. hammer sword come down? No, not oh, quite. Just wasn't right there. Oh, very, very close. And it's gone. Propane knocking attitude adjustment out of the fight. Yeah. Very controlled. The the there we go. Immediately schism right underneath Ava. And Eva there coming down with a hammer saw. They thought they had the opportunity. Both of these using those long forks to keep an arm's distance. But we will see someone start to crack. And it looks like they're once again head to head against each other. Both trying to position themselves to get the forks under the other as Schism is now done. Yeah, they're very much a case of locking horns with these longer forks. You're waiting for that one opportunity where you can catch the opponent off guard. As Eva has gotten there against Schism, Schism has gotten away. But as Eva lifted their arm, they pushed Schism off of their forks. Yeah. So that was actually quite lucky for Schism. Yeah, it, it, you need the right geometry to be able to land that weapon in an effective manner for both of these opponents. And once again, look at them locking horns. They've lifted each other up. I'm interested to see if one of them wants to throw down the axe, but not quite. And now Schism once again getting the better of the exchange. I haven't seen either of them have an advantage in pushing power per se. So it's a really evenly matched fight. There's a locking of horns, and look at this. Both of them being really cautious with their spinning hammer discs. I mean, they've, they've seen what's happened to Saw Loser, to Attitude Adjuster, to uh, Discombobulator. They're playing this one safe. They really are, but now we're seeing Eva right up against the wall. Schism pushing them ever closer to the pit. We have less than a minute left to go. Very cagey there. Nearly in. So Eva daring, daring on the edge of the, the pit there, but now they're back into control. Look at them lifting up Schism up into the side. Eva's finally got an opportunity. They've been taking advantage of it there. Certainly something's gone flying. Less than 30 seconds off this fight as they're pirouetting around each other. Once again, locking horns and now Schism with the better position. Trying to just get in, but Eva's just not moving at all. Really impressive design. Nine, Scary moment for both. Eight, Turn to five, 10 second countdown has begun. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Begin. And straight away, Schism once again charging in, and you can see the forks getting head to head against each other. That's the adjustment with the first hammer saw, though. Yeah, locking horns, no hesitation from either. An attitude adjuster keeping that weapon up to speed. Schism playing impatiently. So, attitude adjuster, I think, is something. Yeah, and it's worked. And that's the emergency link. Is it? The link is out. Attitude adjuster is the winner. Attitude adjuster has done it. It has immobilized Schism with a perfect hit. Begin! David, wasting no time trying to stop that weapon from spinning. Very, very cagey at the moment. And now we're seeing the difference here. Whereas the uh, the saw hammers were locking up with their forks, that is not the same for propane. They are wanting to get close to the body. They want to get underneath and close. And so far, I think they're being the better of the maneuverers. Yeah, Ava's trying not to go head to head. You can see their one head to head moment there. Uh, everything still pretty cagey, I would say. But another nice hit from Propane here. I think Ava's just a little bit cautious. They just need to calm their nerves, get back into control, because Propane is so far finding that side edge, which is what they need to be able to lift up Eva and do some damage. I think Ava might be struggling with drive on one side, which is not going to help things at all. And we can hear now the grinding of Propane as they destroy the underside of Eva. Now locking pawns as they do their pirouette, pushing towards the pit button, not quite touching it. And is that arm working on Ava O2? And are we seeing an immobilization? I'm watching the Roboteer. They're moving their controller. Eva appears to be out. I think it is all come tumbling down, tumbling down. Propane is your BBB Raw 2024 champion. That's right, they're all excellent. Are they all absolutely brilliant, Roboteer?
box. And where do we start with this? I think Chili Daddy there um, doing whatever it does. Um, I don't know, I've, I've lost the words. We've got a big variety of weapon types in here. The Chili Daddy, the big horizontal, likely the most chaotic. We Big Loud will be looking to avoid the Chili Daddy probably beyond anyone else. And then Yam is in there on. Uh, President Fraser first of all is making art. Your name. Yam is really best suited to being in an arena hazard. Yeah, I would call it that. But, uh, well, who's alive, really? I think they're all kicking. Chili Daddy. A bit crippled on the drive. Yeah, the attrition of having four big spinners in the arena starts to show Chili Daddy losing drive on one side. Still a very mobile and agile robot, even with that advantage. Bonkers goes flying. I think it lost a or someone has, I think it might be Chili Daddy. Uh, but yeah, we're in there, Willy Big Lad still going. Slightly bent on the wheel, but I don't think that will bother it too much. Yeah, well, that is some big damage to Yam. Yam is sad. I think we do have a go to the judges, because then we can put our judges to use. Unlike you guys. I think we'll find a way to get to the judges either way. Bonkers, and the judges may want to pay attention to this, compared to their criteria. Thank Down a side of drive here. That rear right not facing the way it should. What's Chili Daddy doing in all this? But nothing. So a battle of four spinners is going to be destruction and carnage. And Killjoy having a fight with the arena floor. Yeah, so we can see here Killjoy struggling a tough. Meanie Mouse taking no prisoners, showing it deserves to go further in the competition. Going after Exposure, who not able to compete in the main tournament, but is here now and is willing to show, you know, it can do what it wants, it can show off, and, it, you know, it's gone in with the Sharks, basically. It's gone in with a lot of other vertical spinners. Very good job in yeah. going in. Oh, up into the roof goes Killjoy. I was going to say, Killjoy was unsettling Meanie Mouse, and I think Meanie Mouse now just getting some payback. I think, yeah, I think Killjoy has lost the belt on its drum, so... Meanie Mouse looking very aggressive at the moment, taking a wheel off of exposure um, and uh, landing another hit on rear. This is all Meanie Mouse at the moment. Sending another robot up into the air. Let's see if they can send them over to the Uta Zone. I think that is a disengaged robot, actually. Yeah. Only Killjoy now looking mobile. Yeah, we, uh, the other wheel of exposure has been taken off. So there's more. Uh, yeah, that was it. Uh, I sort of didn't even catch what happened at the very end there, but was a victory for Meanie Mouse, not even close, I think like, I have to say. Thank you. So here we can see Impulse immediately and Wet Lettuce. Very much the fast of these, fast of these two robots. I was going to say, with them being non-spinners, that is really their aggression here. Just the sheer speed and control. And AOB getting a little bit stuck around that pit area. But they will get back into this and start pushing their way through. But look at Impulse, that is incredible. Yeah. And you mentioned there, we saw it, the lifting ability of those forks. Yeah, it's such a unique design of lifter. Um, a lot of linkages, very complicated to get sort of everything balanced right. Yeah, Impulse did it on the first try. It's, uh, it's remarkable how well it's able to act as a flipping pit. robot. Going so down. almost getting A and B over into the Uta zone, Going simultaneously down. hitting the pit button, and Impulse is just charging their way around the arena. But A and B doing their darndest to get Impulse into the pit, not quite happening. And Wet Lettuce now under the receiving end. Yeah, Wet Lettuce is doing a good job, but it is going to be half the way, and that is going to need a lot less pushing power. AOB has to be, yes, we said the weapon has not quite been effective as they've been hoping for, but it's not out of this one. It's getting a few pushes in on Impulse. Well, we're seeing Wet Lettuce, I think, struggling on the arena floor. They're trying to stay out of trouble, and more importantly, trying to stay out of the pit. Impulse definitely targeting AOB. AOB lined up. They almost duked Impulse into the pit. But now AOB in a very dangerous position. Can they get out without falling in? I don't think they can. Look at this, Wimples bringing the forks forward in a very, very elegant Wet letters. Uh, got Bop and go. other robots. I'm voting for Bop here. Um, oh, I do love a bit of Bop. Bop is already upside down. Oh, come on, Bop. Good start. Bop. Go on, someone, someone unbop Bop. Give him a Bop, go on. Oh, almost, almost. Serious camera action going here, mainly. I, I just love the wooden mallet, like. Oh no indeed, Craig. Oh no indeed. Um, uh, the, 
belt is off, apparently. It's fine, that belt wasn't needed. It's no. no. It's uh, aesthetic. It's 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 uh, in the meantime, I have quite the tussle in the corner. Um, Custom maintenance is uh, doing things. Oh, I don't, I don't see the wooden mallet moving anymore. Oh, uh, oh his link has fallen out. Oh, dear. A classic cluster. I'm going down. You all need to duct tape your links better, this keeps happening. There you go, that's a top tip from Rory Mangles off the telly. Duct tape in your links. Also turn off safe start. Um, Wait, Mike sorry, are you guys off the telly? Oh, I love the way this one moves. Sorry, the guys on microphones right now are off the telly. Have you guys seen Robot Wars before? Sorry, have, have anyone here seen Robot Wars before? What about Battlebots? Anyone know Battlebots? That's what I thought. So oh my goodness, it's the Joe Brown. It's Joe BBB Brown. Or BBB. So I, I was on BBB the television. Stop. However, anyway, <laughs> there is a fight going on as well, everybody. <laughs> yeah, let's talk Funnily about enough, this fight. A fight. Unfortunately, Bob is out, so I lost it. I lost it. No, I like um, this. great. <laughs> I love the way that this, that this one moves with the three wheels. It's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. What's the name of the machined one? I love it. that much attention. We'll go to but the judges. They do not they power do. out in this fight. And very slow as everyone gets decided who they want to fight up against. But Doorstop, they've gone straight in for some damage. Oh my goodness, I think they've just knocked out Yam in one hit. That is pretty amazing because Yam is normally a bit of a tank. So props to them. Go, go my boys at Bristol. And now here comes the Doorstop in the back to try and do some flipping. Uh, that is their ultimate ability there. Well, they're getting flipped by other robots for sure. They're, I'm not sure about themselves. Good to see. Doing yeah, some showboating. And John Fear looks to be a little bit static in the arena there. Again, suffering from what they were during the competition round. Absolutely. So we've got a, another student here with Bite that's just visited for this whiteboard. And it's great to see other students getting involved and destroying the current students. So it uh, looks like one of the forks of Electromechanical is up in the air. That's a, either a salute to one of its competitors, or maybe it's just stuck and needs a bit of grease. That is, yeah, that's going to cause some issues with trying to engage, but uh, we've still got three robots sort of moving in the arena. Still the opportunity for some carnage to be done, when, especially when you get that spinner on spinner. That's when the high impact can take place. You've got two very fast moving tips. There is a, a maximum tip speed and door stop turning themselves into a spinner. Incredible. I think John Deere has just been counted out um, because they are no longer mobile. So we've got two robots left in the fight, one from Bristol and one from a local school. So let's see if the schoolboys can take down the uni students. Well, I think Doorstop has just become a little bit wedged themselves up against the arena wall. Is that them out? I think it so. Is. So will Ogre Bait last more than one hit this time? No, it doesn't seem like this, but Discombobulator doing some shredding damage there. Oh, big hit once, like one half the uh, Ogre Bait. So the Ogre Bait's finally getting into the competition because they didn't do much during the competitive rounds, but now they are showing their true power. And it's a one-on-one -on -one now with half of Ogbeck to Jimmy Daddy, but <laughs> it's straight into the wall. Well, the weight difference there really did not go in Ogbeck's favour, and I think that is the end, everybody. Big Daddy's uh, new weapon setup seems to be really working in its favour this fight. Big game. So, very interesting collection of weaponry here. Um, Burnout spinning, Jeremy spinning. Really big lads. Um, that weapon is a lot scarier than I think a lot of people gave the credit for earlier. Especially the way they're managing to control and, it. And we saw actually their slot machine was making a really nice, you know, gouge on burnout there. So, really cool to see that robot effective again. Really interesting design. Well, I think it's only nice depending on your perspective. Uh, not so much nice for Jeremy, but... And in a slot machine now over in the pit area. Really big boy doing a little bit more damage onto Jeremy. Very nice hit there, getting a whack on Burnout. Yeah, it's got the pipe already, 
Uh, they are just cosmetic, do not worry, that's not uh, necessary for the robot. A wheelie big boy doing some fantastic, impactful hits with that spinning sword. Yeah, it's very hard to drive a robot like that. It's going it's, down. It's, it's making as many connections as it is. It's very impressive. Down. That was a fun sound. Right on top of slot machine there, but now we got Burnout being picked oh. right up. And look at that! Yeah, that's destroyed the saw blade right then and there. Vicious. So now Burnout been saved, I think, by Wheelie Big Boy. Uh, but Slot Machine is not going to be thankful of that. And once again doing some more damage. I think that's the Sword Blade completely destroyed. Yeah, it makes this wonderful noise when it hits an opponent, Wheelie Big Lad. I, I've never heard a spinner like that before. But you can see Burnout has flipped over Slot Machine. I think it's a two-robot race now. And Slot Machine is out of this, so yeah, very much so. Burnout somehow still manages to survive. Oh. All of the damage Slot Machine it's could dish it's out. using the Sword Blade as a makeshift wheel. And Wheelie Big Boy is out. They have touched the floor. Burnout, I think, is your winner. Yes, if, an opponent, if any part of your robot touches the app. Uh, we begin, and we can already see Saw Loser. Oh, they're going for it. No hesitation. No hesitation at all. That was beautifully lined up, and they perfectly got powered up as well. But now they're actually going in to do some damage oh, yeah. to their Saw counterpart, their Spinner counterpart. The Burn actually getting some pretty nice hits on Saw Loser there, has to be said. Knocking them over, putting the pressure on, while unfortunately it seems like uh, Evil Twin is stuck on the pit. And you can hear this, the spinners rubbing against the plastic bottles, but they're just not having enough impact to really blow them up. I think both of the non spinners are going to be out of here now. Going down. Uh, yeah, the pit's down. So and is that go. teetering on the edge? And, yeah, Bert the Bert landing another really good shot on Saab Hoosen here. I don't think Saul has really gotten a good hit on Bert the Bird here yet. This is quite a surprise. Ooh, well, that was a good one, though. And that was an eye flying off there, I think, of Bert. But now Bert getting underneath of Saw Loser. And now they are actually getting some damage in on this fight. Yeah, you can see here. Ooh. Using it more as a vertical spinner now. Um, and oh, no! Is that the big? Is that the big? That is indeed the thing. And it's a question that will Saw Loser the end. I think that's it. Well, they're, oh, trying, they're trying to get back into the fight. This isn't going to end. 30 seconds left, but is Bert actually able to engage? Saw Loser has freed Bert the Bert. Okay, so the fight is going to continue. 20 more seconds of carnage. Incredible sportsmanship. Oh, incredibly. Yeah, that's it. He's, yeah, there we go. That was a flex from Saw Loser. It has to be a fight. Thank you. Straight on an Inferno onto Kairos. No fear at all. Going straight into that weapon there. And Kairos is not moving. I was going to say, yeah. Uh, oh, and a mini mod is up in. into the air. I think Kairos is dead, unfortunately. Suki is taking a hit. Percussive maintenance has been actually pretty aggressive so far. Going after Suki Kage and now Inferno. Taking the fight over to Inferno. And for a robot that hasn't done any battling today, Inferno is mighty feisty. They want to do as much damage as they possibly can in this whiteboard. Yeah, they have two minutes of fighting and they're going to use all of it as much as they possibly can. So now we start to see the control bots potentially ganging up now. Percussive maintenance very impressively stopping that weapon. Suki Kage under Inferno now. And that might have let Inferno actually get away. And Suki Kage very close to going into the pit there. Very close as they were, but not quite. Dancing around, they do seem to slide around this arena floor. Yeah, they've, re uh, they've got a style of driving that really seems to favor drifting. But it has to be said, because of maintenance, he's been driving very, very well in this fight. And it looks like Tsukikaki is now immobilized. They're upside down. The countdown has begun for them. No, so Inferno is now a two robot fight. So we can see here both of these robots very aggressive, it has to be said. And Inferno has been getting a few hits on because of maintenance, but it hasn't really done any major damage yet. Suki Kage is moving again. And they were counted out, but it's a whiteboard, so who cares? Get in there, do some damage. Fair enough, we can see here. It's Suki Kage is back in. The Inferno is still driving the weapon, not hitting as badly. And there we go, because of maintenance. Nice. Scoring the pinning there. So, because of maintenance, for those keeping track, is the official winner. But let's get some more damage going whilst 
Uh, Sukigaki is still involved in the fight. 